Hi guys, thank you for joining us. We are having a look today at the new EOS R3. It is not the official flagship camera of Canon yet, but man, this thing is a racehorse. Um, we're going to dive into the specs and everything about this. I've been out here in Tiger Canyon, uh, the only wild population of tigers in Africa. And uh, we've been putting this thing to the test. It is incredible. The, the frame rate, the focusing system, the durability, the build quality, just the, the ergonomics on this camera, how it feels in hand, how it handles. And that's one of the things that I have to say about Canon's equipment. Um, when out using the equipment, it, it just fits into the hand. It, it really has a nice sit. The, the intuitiveness of the, the menus, everything. We're going to dive into some of the details in a second and uh, have a look at it. I've also been privileged enough to have a look at the new 16 millimeter RF. We've also had a look at the RF 100 to 400 millimeter. That's also coming out soon. One of the things I really want to kind of like dive in onto is this little 16 millimeters. It's a cute little lens, but it is super impressive. It falls into the family line of the RF uh, 35mm, the 50mm STM and the 85mm STM. Uh, really nice wide angle for full frame RF. And the great thing about it, f2.8, for all those uh, astrophotography lovers, we took this out and we had a couple of shots of it at the stars. And I mean, if you can see here, the image quality is incredible. The, it, it's a nice portable little lens. I really see this on my camera, just walking around, carrying the camera around and taking uh, great shots. It's a nice wide angle. It, it, it's sharp from edge to edge. I'm really impressed by it. it. It's great. Again, as well, we've also got this one adding to the family. It's a 100 to 400 millimeter RF lens. It's not to replace the EF 100 to 400 by no means. This is a 100 to 400 millimeter F 5.6 to F 8. It's image stabilized, it's light, it's easy to carry around and kind of a great addition if you are going out and you want to go and trek through a mountain but you do want to get some shots of birds. This kind of falls to a perfect segue to the RF 600 and the RF 800 millimeters. It's a great addition to the family and I think one of the wonderful things that Canon have really mastered here is they have managed to bring out a stack of lenses to fill nearly all the gaps you might need. Price point, quality, I mean the quality on this is, is really really impressive. It also, what we found out, works with a RF 1.4 converter which is quite impressive. It takes you up to close to 160 to 600 millimeter lens. And it's light and easy to use. The price point on these are also really friendly to the guys shooting RP, shooting R. And I mean, even if you want to put this onto the R3, again, light, easy to use. Which brings me back to the R3. The light weight of this really impressed me quite a lot. The focusing system, the menus, everything has been amazing on this camera from what I found. But I have had to play with the details and the settings. Looking at the camera's menu setup, again, it's very at home for anybody shooting uh, Canon. Uh, looking at the different options that we've got available, we've got on the tracking systems new varieties that have come in, new functions. So it has changed from the R6 to the R5. But it truly has been an improvement. Again, and I repeat this, you will need to spend some time working out what is going to work best for you. On the first day out, I was super impressed by the frame rate, by the focusing speed. But moving from one sighting to another, I had focusing issues, picking it up, hitting the target, and I, I was less impressed. Let's call it that. And it came down to simple settings in the menu. There's, as an example, the way I learned it or picked it up, there's a preview AF option that I had to disable. It's basically the same as on the R5 and the R6 where you had the continuous AF option. 
So in dropping the camera, it would continuously search for focus in front of me or at my feet. As soon as we got to a sighting and saw something, pick it up, it was still trying to figure out what am I focusing on here nearby. The moment I switched that feature off, had a huge improvement on the tracking and, and just picking up the eyes, the animals, be it head tracking, face tracking, sticking on the animal. Um, it, it, it's, it's an incredible system. The, the zones have changed slightly. And the great thing now is you can actually customize the section where it's going to focus in. So in terms of focusing in a specific zone, Looking at ISO and shutter speeds, and again, because it's on electronic shutter, we now have the capability of shooting up to 64 thousandth of a second. The ISO runs up to 100 thousand. But again, the, the handling of the ISO is always a big factor. It doesn't help. A camera has a million ISO and you can't use it. And again, the low light handling, the high ISO noise handling on this camera is an absolute wonder. It is such a pleasure to use this and all the intricacies come together in this system. Now, some of the things that can be an issue, obviously we're shooting on 24 megapixels versus 45 on an R5. Looking at competitive products, they might have more megapixels in uh, uh, competitive models but what i found we went out yesterday into the bush we shot 3000 plus shots downloading those images and actually working through all of those images this thing is a workhorse it is literally there to give you the options to pick out from having the privilege to go out and shoot with r5 as well i've got r5 files i've handled r5 files my pc hates me for it because they are huge which is great if you're doing landscapes portraits if you're cropping in on your images a lot but with this 24 megapixels is actually more than you would think the cropping capability is still very good on this camera the handling of the files is super quick and easy. The file sizes are more manageable. And again, that brings it back to the quantity that you will be shooting. So looking at wildlife or birding, you're heading out, you're shooting thousands of images. All of a sudden, you're not working with 45 to 50 megabyte files. You're working with smaller files. It's easier to manage. Looking at wedding photographers. This thing's tough, durable, battery life is in no means a question with me anymore. Looking from the DSLR side of uh, things, a lot of people have been complaining about mirrorless and the battery life on the cameras. Looking at this system, it's a different story. Thanks to this LPE19 battery. Looking at the R5 and the R6, I've always just told people, buy another battery. I've got batteries in my pockets that negates the problem. Here they've negated the problem with a much larger battery next step in this thing obviously a lot of people are questioning oh, i don't need a video camera why can't they just bring out something that's just a stills camera versus a camera that stills and video the production cost on creating two separate products when you can just squish it into one is huge so it won't necessarily make your camera cheaper what it does do in this is if you do go out into the field, you have the capability of shooting up to 6K video. You can do 4K video at 120 frames per second. You can do full HD. You've got all the options built into this. It's got in-body image stabilization. So if you're running around doing a bit of a, a selfie or a vlogging kind of setup, it's great. If you're doing handheld, it does help a lot. One of the things that really stood out for me regarding the, the video functionality is the ease of use. Again, if we're set up for taking stills and we want to switch to video or something happens in that moment, you don't have to switch to video. By simply pressing the video record button, it defaults to a video setting and there you go. That is set up on your custom three. So if you do want to have a preset of your video functionality, your video settings, you can set it on custom threes video function. And that is your default 
on the record button at the top. So it is a great little shortcut. The customization on the buttons as well. I've played around with everything. Um, there have been some arguments with regards to how I've customized it, but that's a great thing is the options are there to change it to what suits you best. Again, after spending some time with it, you find a way that's going to work a lot better for you. You can, as a simple example, have normal tracking on the front and you can have eye tracking on one of the back buttons. You can deactivate it, activate it as you wish. Looking at the 6K video, you've got gamma log. You have got a stack of different features, but one of the golden nuggets that I found in a redacted file of the spec sheets and blah, 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 blah. I'll get to the spec sheets in a second. But one of the little gems in there that I found is that this does not have the 29 minute and 59 second record limit. This records video until the battery runs flat or your memory card is filled. That means for those guys out in video production companies looking at shooting lengthy videos, be it wildlife, be it documentaries, be whatever the case might be, you don't have to stop, start, start when it stops. It, it, it just runs. It runs. This thing is built for speed and durability. This is, I, I, I'm, I keep on ending up without words for this. The, the weather ceiling on this, I mean, we have been out in the dust, lying in the dirt, and it's been all over us. We get back to a clean environment. We open up, try and see what's going on. Everything's clean. It is perfectly sealed. It is a well-built unit. I wouldn't drive in a tent pen with this, but I think it's good for anything else. If you want to compare cameras on spec sheets, this might not be the camera for you. If you want a camera that can go out and go and do anything, this might be your system. This is absolutely easy to use. It's comfortable. It just delivers shot after shot. The focusing system is in place where you want it, where you, when you need it. It's good, guys. It is just that good. Getting the opportunity to come out here to Tiger Canyon and put this camera to the test i had a couple of questions obviously there have been rumors spreading around about this camera for quite a while we've heard about the eye control autofocus um, obviously a slightly different not slightly it is monumentally different to the normal eye tracking so what this system actually does in the eye control tracking is it follows your eye it's a great feature i've played around with it a little bit and there is a Bit of a learning curve there, both on your side as a user and on the camera side. So the deep learning system in this camera actually trains by keeping an eye on your eye to see how you focus and how you use it to improve the use of it. If you have a look at the menu system and we go into the eye control function, you actually have to go and calibrate it. You have to switch it on. It's got a whole training system, how it actually looks at your eye, picks it up, where you're looking. But the practicality of this is when you are photographing something in a specific situation, you can use your eye to put the focus point on your subject. As soon as you hit the focusing button, be it back button, front button focusing, it switches off the eye control tracking temporarily. So you're busy focusing, you're shooting, you release the focus button and it's back onto your eye tracking. So your eye tracking, you are controlling where the focus point heads with your eye. So as soon as you look at your subject and you've got the right subject, let's say you're photographing a, a herd of buffalo or whatever, you want one specific one sticking out and you want to focus on that one. It's a great system. It can be frustrating but I can absolutely see how in specific scenarios it is game changing. Photographing multiple vehicles, heading down a straight or coming around a bend. You want to select that one vehicle instead of moving around and getting arthritis on your thumb, you just look at it, press the button and you're on the vehicle. You're on your subject. And from there you're back to the normal tracking system that you set it up to. 
This is such a well thought through system and it, it has only been a pleasure working with this. I want to thank Canon South Africa for giving me the opportunity to use this thing and put it down to the test. I want to thank ODP for sending me out here for a couple of days. And I want to thank Tiger Canyon for hosting us at this incredible venue. The views, the, the sightings we've had have been phenomenal. Um, guys, get out to the shop, come and have a look. I cannot wait to get these into the hands of some of you guys. This is a phenomenal piece of equipment. There are going to be some hard questions asked between R5, R3. But if you need action, if you need that focusing, you can't miss a moment. This is it. It's R3.